convince you? What's it gonna take, lady? How do you think we've been getting into your house? What do you mean? Okay, uh, like the night of the guinea pig? Ivy made sure the alarm at your house was off and that the door was unlocked, and she texted us when you were a few blocks away. I don't believe you. Why would she do that? To make you crazy. Why would my own wife want to make me crazy? You have to ask her that, but she wasn't super thrilled you voted for Jill Stein. I know that much. Are you kidding me? That's not a reason. Maybe she just hates you. I don't know, but you were just one project. We had a bunch. Welcome to Build. Uh, my name is Cole Delbick, and I'm here with TV icon Leslie Grossman. <laughs> Let's give it up. Hello. Icon. <laughs> you laugh, you laugh mean, at Icon, but it's true. I'll take it. That was a scene with me and Sarah Paulson. I don't know if you know that, but she's really good at acting. Very good. I mean, you mm -hmm. went toe-to-toe -to -toe with her there. I tried. I worked real hard at it. You know, I've been a fan of you for so long, and your work on American Horror Story this season has been incredible. My only complaint is that I wanted to see more of you. Um, so what took this long for you to come aboard American Horror Story? I don't know. I mean, I, I think that... Most people see me as, you know, a comedic actress, and it certainly wasn't the show that I thought I was gonna be on that Ryan was doing. I thought maybe he'd hopefully squeeze me into something else, but when he told me that he had a part for me, I was terrified and excited, and it all seemed to work out. But it was not the genre that I ever saw myself being a part of, and it's really, really fun. Maybe, I, were you thinking Scream Queens, Glee? Who knows? But something that was more, I mean, look, there were definitely some comedic elements to my character. You can't, this face, I don't know how to not do stuff with it. So even, and I swear to God, even lines that I thought, I was like, I think I played that pretty straight. And people were like, that was hilarious the way you said that. And I was like, I was being dramatic. So <laughs> try as I might, I, I always seem to give it some little twist. I don't know. No, and that twist is why we love you so much. Um, you know, I was talking to your co-star, Cheyenne Jackson. Yes, I love Cheyenne. Oh, me too. He's and fantastic. He was saying that Ryan sort of pitched him his character in a single sentence text message. So what did it take to sort of woo you, to persuade you to come to this universe? What did it take to woo me, yeah. to ask me, uh, tell me that uh, he has a job for me? <laughs> That's it. That was it. all it took. I'm a real cheap date. Um, you know, he... I didn't know the whole scope of my character, and I certainly didn't know what her arc was gonna be. I didn't know we were gonna wind up in a mass shooting. No. That was a little bit of a surprise for me, but I knew that she was a dedicated Housewives fan, the only thing I really had in common with that character. Uh, married to Billy Eichner, who was an out gay man, and I, my character knew that and was okay with it, and that they were presidents of the, the Nicole Kidman fan club. And I heard those things, and I was like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life, and I don't know where this is gonna go, but I am on the journey with you. But I love it, to woo me. When Ryan texts you and said, I, I have a part for you, the next American Horror Story, you're not like, I don't know, convince me. You're like, oh my God, yes, please, thank you. I mean, it just sounds tailor-made for you, though. I mean, given your prolific Housewives fandom. That is true. It is something that Ryan and I have in common. We do like to talk about the Housewives, so. Were you able to give any input? I mean, because it seems nope. like this is like from your brain almost. It fits so well. <laughs> no. I, you know, I have to be honest. I don't know if when they came up with the character of Meadow, if they had me in mind, if they'd already written it. And then Ryan said, wait, this might be a good fit for Leslie. I don't know what the chicken or the egg of the whole situation was, but... The writers on that show are so, so good, and they come up with such excellent, specific character detail. So I, I added nothing to it, trust me. Nobody was calling me, and they were like, do you have any pointers for us, Leslie, with our writing? I was just like, I'll show up and say whatever you write. And you know, did you, I'm sure you knew Billy Eichner before, but did you, have you worked with him? Were you friends? I had because never worked with Billy Eichner. We'd had friends in common and we met, of course, the first time we met was at the Barbara Streisand concert. What a way to which, meet. Which of course, that's where we met. Isn't that perfect? Uh, I am a huge Billy on the street fan. So I was not cool. Uh, with Billy about that, and I, like, I'm the person that's like, do you remember that time when you and Elena, and then you were with Michelle Obama in the market? Like, I really, and he was like, mm-hmm, I was there, I filmed it, so I think I was a little much for him, but he was a dream scene partner, co-star, so fantastic, and because he and I were jumping on this train in season seven of a show that's a very well-known entity, it was nice to have a buddy that we were kind of jumping into the cold water together, and wasn't he so great in this really dramatic turn, and it was fun to get to be there for it. And I remember the first 
the first time I really saw him bring it, I was like, well, Billy Eichner, look at you. So, so good. And also smart and funny and all those terrific things that you think he would be. I really like him. I feel like maybe I like him a little more than he likes me. I stop myself from texting him all the time. So I plan my texts and then he's responsive. But I know that if I'm too much, he's going to pull away. So I have to play it cool with him. You know, but you kind of also share this journey from moving to more comedic world yes. to more serious <clears throat> acting world. Did you guys sort of bond over that as well? I mean, I think there were moments where he and I were like, how, how are we going to play this? This is bananas. And we both decided to just go for it, which I think is always the best advice to do. Like, don't be critical of yourself. Don't overthink it. Do it. And then it always turns out well, I think. But we, we kind of were flying blind, you know? Um, you know, a really strong image from the season that sticks out to me is in the, uh, the pilot, the opener, mm -hmm. when Sarah, we hear Sarah Paulson's blood curling <laughs> scream um, upon Trump's win, mm -hmm. and how a lot of the season is about sort of unleashing, unleashing female anger. It's about uh, female rage. Female rage. Don't be afraid of that term, uh, Cole. Did you resonate with that? Was that? Did this show sort of help you process um, the events of the election at all? Um, I mean, I guess. I don't know. I'm such a huge Trump fan. Just kidding. <laughs> That's not the truth. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. The day after the election was a real bummer. It was my daughter's birthday. And I remember, you know, when you're a kid and you have a birthday at school, you bring treats and it's so fun. And I remember my daughter saying to me, everybody is going to be in the worst mood at school today. And I felt so bad. And we had a PTA meeting that morning, actually. I dropped her off at school, and I went to this meeting. And people were openly weeping. So, And I, I took it really, really hard. And when I first heard that this was going to be the concept of this season, I thought, that is so clever and so interesting. And when people first heard about it, there was this, like, oh, I'm sick of the election, and I don't want to hear about Trump and Hillary anymore. And as you saw, it was really a minor part of it. It was just the jumping off point. And I've said this before, but I, I think it bears repeating. Really, the season is about fear. And what happens when you allow yourself to be consumed by it and how people use fear to manipulate. And I think you see through the arc of Sarah's character, which has been so fun to watch, right? From who she is in the beginning. Just wait till you see the finale, Cole. I had to wait. take a deep breath before I could even get that sentence out because I think tour de force is a fair term here. Um, but to see how she transcends all that and then becomes unstoppable, I, I think it's an important thing because I, I do think everybody's so afraid right now in so many respects. And I think, um, I think if we could stop being afraid and stand by the courage of our convictions, I, I do think things will turn out okay. But you never know. Let's see. <laughs> Nuclear war. <laughs> it's super fun oh that we're talking God, about no. that. Um, Bet you didn't think I was going to talk about nuclear war today, Cole, did you? No, let's go there. Let's go <laughs> let's there. Let's not. It's okay. No. <laughs> you know, you mentioned Sarah Paulson, and this cast is so insanely talented. It is. Was that a big draw for you to kind of be in scenes with these players? It was a draw. It was also terrifying, and I was really scared. And the, I remember the first day I worked with Sarah, I was doing a lot of apologizing. I was like, no, but it'll be better. I was like, that's just my first take, and then that'll be better. I mean, she's... It's like watching a master class in acting every day that you work with her. She's so good and she cares so much and her commitment level is so high that you just want to, you know, you just want to keep up. You know, I'm just like running alongside of her. It's like someone who's a professional marathoner and I'm like, I just, I don't know how to run, but I'll just try to keep up with you through this race. So I hope I didn't make a total fool of myself. But the thing about Sarah that's so amazing is that she's unbelievably giving and I know that people hate when actors talk about the specific, they're like, oh, it sounds so actory. But the truth is, she, you do not come in and she's like, hi, I'm the star of the show, and I'm not going to look at you, and we're going to do our scenes, and it's all about me. It is the opposite of that. She's like, I'm here to get into it. I'm going to look you right in the eye, and we are scene partners together. And I felt like we could have been doing American Horror Story. It could have been a 99-seat theater on Santa Monica Boulevard in Hollywood. And it's the same amount of effort and dedication. And that makes everybody around you raise their game from hair, makeup, wardrobe, props. She's no joke, you know, and you don't want to disappoint her. And it's also inspiring. You want to try to get to her level. So it keeps everybody on their toes.
Well, it seems like you all formed a really strong bond. We on did. Set. We and had you fun. You to love each other. <laughs> you guys went to a Cher concert? Yes, we did go to a Cher concert. That was one of the best weekends of my entire life. Uh, Chaz Bono, who starred as Gary on the show, was lovely enough to write an email and said, look, my mom is going to be playing in Las Vegas, and I thought it would be fun if we could all go together and go see her. And my hands flew across the keyboard very quickly, Cole. And I was like, I'm in. Yes, please count me. Put me on the list. And it was just so fun. And that is rare. I think that many times a job is a job, and people do their work, and they want to go home and not talk to each other. But we had such a good time together. It was really, really fun. Did you watch all our Insta stories? Oh, my god. We went a little Breathlessly. crazy. Breathlessly. They forced me to go to a club. <laughs> it was not, it, it's not my nature. And it was one of those, it was one of those Vegas, uh, outdoor clubs and it was like 100 degrees outside and there was a pool and there was like 5,000 people in a pool and I was just terrified of that water getting, because how much bacteria is in that a lot, pool? A lot. Let's be honest. <laughs> so um, I allowed them to force me to go out and it was really Billy Lord. I didn't want to disappoint Billy Lord and so I was proud of myself and I was glad that I stayed out with the big boys and girls. <laughs> And then you all recently reconvened for Colton Haynes' wedding, or I know you were there. It was so amazing. It looked beautiful. That was a magical night. Jeff Lethem, who Colton married, is, I don't even know what to call it because he's so much more than saying he's a celebrity florist. He's an artist. He does all the flowers for the Four Seasons. They fly him to Paris once a month. They, I think he's in Brazil right now. And the flowers that he did for his own wedding, I've never seen anything like it. I've also never been around the smell of that many flowers. It was just magical. And of course, Chris Jenner was the officiant. Take a breath, Cole. Take it in. <laughs> Don't just go. I mean, that's a big deal. And you know what? She was excellent. Was she? What she did was she so, even say up there? She, she spoke about their love for each other. What a beautiful couple they are. Their bright future together. But she was so lovely and perfect and sweet. It was just she was great. She was really, really good. You know what I love about you is that you're such a fan of pop culture. I am. Um, and we have people out there, you know, I remember like Shailene Woodley saying she doesn't watch TV. Oh, come you know, on. Sort of like the, like I'm not like that. But you why know? not? Exactly. Thank God for the TV. I gotta, I gotta have fun sometimes, Cole. Why do people think that, look, I love Shailene Woodley. She's an incredible Same. actress. But she was in Big Little Lies, which was one of the best things on my TV this last year. So why doesn't she want a TV to watch other amazing, great things? I would die. Also, I grew up with a family that was very into limiting my TV time, and it really backfired because it became the focus of my life to get as much TV time as possible. And even to this day, I'm like, I can watch as much TV as I want, mom and dad. Take that. Take that. So I love it. I'm a big fan. So what is that like, sort of? balancing your desires as a fan, but also you're a fan, people are a fan of you and of your work. Does it, you're not, are you on, like, how does that I'm work? I'm gonna be honest, I still can't believe that I'm doing this and that I get to do this. And I didn't think that this was ever gonna be my future, that this was gonna be something I got to do. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, but no one in my family was in the business. So I could have been raised in anywhere USA. And to me, it seemed like this unattainable, unreachable dream. And also I thought only like super gorgeous model people could go be actors, you know? So I didn't start acting professionally until I was 24 years old. And that's kind of late to the game. Um, wait, I lost my train of thought. What were you asking me? Oh, so in my mind, like I I'm still, do you know what I mean? Like I'm way more fan than working actor. Does that make sense? And there's many times I work with people, like I guest starred on a CBS show that got canceled with Tony Shalhoub. And he was in the chair next to me in the makeup trailer and I was like, like, I'd earned that it's part. Monk. Yeah, exactly. Like, I auditioned for it. I got that part, and I was still so geeked out to see him. Like, I can't, I'm more fan than anything else. I really am. I'm not cool. Well, you know, I think there are very few performers in sort of the Ryan Murphy oeuvre who've been able to. Oeuvre. Oeuvre, yeah. Nice use of that. Thank you. Word. Good um, for you. you know, oeuvre. 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 <laughs> Go on. Um, you know, who've been able to bring his sort of wit and brilliance to life like you have. Um, and of course, I'm talking about popular first and foremost. <laughs> yes. And I'm curious, do you still sort of hold Mary Cherry and that experience close to your heart? It's such an interesting question because now that it's been years ago, I can look at it with much more affection. That was my first series, that was Ryan's first series. And I had, I didn't know what I was doing. So I went, and excuse me for the term, balls to the wall with that character. And I, I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. And like that accent, 
I remember like I met with a dialect coach and I was like, I'm not gonna do an authentic Texas accent. I'm gonna have a weird accent that is specific to this specific character. Like I remember that I had to say feminist manifesto. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna say it feminis minifisto. <laughs> like, and I just did it, frankly, almost everything I ever did with that character was simply to make Ryan laugh. I was like, he's gonna fall out if I say this or if I do make this face. So it was just to entertain him. Um, but after Popular ended, that character haunted me because it was as over the top and arch as anything could ever be, right? So I think people were like, well, she's super crazy. I'm like, that's a character. I'm not that person um, who I don't club baby seals for fun. Uh, but people, I think, had a, needed a minute to understand that that because they had never seen me really do anything else. So that's who they thought I was. Now that time has passed and I've been able to do other things and do some more serious work, I have, I have an appreciation for how much other people appreciate it. Does that make sense? Almost not a day goes by that somebody doesn't say something to me about that character, whether it's on social media or somebody coming up to me in person and saying something about it. And I love that. That's so lucky and rare. And how fantastic that I had the chance to do something that people loved and that resonated with people. It, that makes me endlessly happy. You know, what a fun thing to get to be a part of. Yeah, I know. I love every, yeah, National Coming Out Day. You shared the, the meme of Mary Cherry loving gays. I mean, I from the, the gays. gays to you, thank you so much. <laughs> we, uh, we appreciate it. I do want to tell you, first of all, so many people have come up to me and said that Mary Cherry was like integral in their coming out story, whether or not the fact that they love Mary Cherry, they were like, I think I might be gay. <laughs> but also, in a larger sense, it's really been the LGBTQ community that's given me a career and that's given me the ability to work and maintain doing this, which is almost impossible. So I have, I think there's a real simpatico going on and I have endless gratitude and appreciation for how incredible that community has been to me and I love it and it's my people and all I ever wanna do is make the LGBT community proud and make them laugh, that's it. By the way, they, I'm using a lot of they. That's weird, I don't mean they. You know what I mean. No, we know what you mean. I mean, okay. let's give it up for that. That's amazing. Thank you. I would have no job. <laughs> um, you know, and that's of course continued with uh, Colt here. Mm -hmm. And you know, it gets really dark in this last, last episode that we've seen pretty much most of the cast has been killed off or <laughs> yeah. suffocated or, mm -hmm. you know, and we leave Kai, this sort of Trump-like figure in this universe. Can you believe Evan Peters? I mean, Every Incredible week, work. first of all, I think he's playing 700 characters. His Charles Manson. How about his Jim Jones? So good. But the Charles Manson could so easily have gone into like a pair, you know what I mean? He, it was so good and fascinating and real. But how about the scene? And if anybody hasn't watched this yet, that's on you because it's already aired. And I hate people are like, spoilers. I'm like, it's aired. <laughs> when he kills Winter. Oh my God, like I knew, I'd read that. I knew it was happening. He's on another level, dude. Like it's on a whole other level. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just had to, it no, was I mean, amazing to watch him do that. Cause I, I don't get that. That's like somebody who's on a different planet doing a different thing. I just have such admiration for it. Would you sort of looking forward ever want to play a character that's a little less like you? I mean, Evan Peters is you know, all over the place here in the Well, season, I don't think Meadow was like me. I wanna tell you something. If someone slapped me when we were doing a pinky power, I certainly wouldn't be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd probably hit them right back and get the F out of Dodge, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I mean, sure, I would love anything that's a challenge. Doing this show was a challenge for me, even though, you know, I think I'm a specific gal. Do you know what I mean? I don't know that I'm the person that like, dissolves and departs and like, I didn't recognize her. It's like I got a real specific voice. I have mannerisms, but the stuff that I was doing in this season was a real challenge for me and I was scared and I was uncomfortable in the beginning because like when they say, get out of your comfort zone, my answer is why it's comfortable there. <laughs> so ultimately the things that make you the most uncomfortable and that you accomplish are the most rewarding. So yes, I would love to continue to challenge myself and I hope that people give me the chance to do that. I mean, I think that's also part of it is sometimes people, mm -hmm put you in a box and they see you that way and hopefully this gets people to say, you know what, maybe she can try this or try that. I think I'll surprise people. 
You did. I mean, I'm so glad you also reappeared in that last episode, not as Meadow, as part of the team. And a brown wig. Yes. That yeah. was brutal. So yeah. how did you sort of prepare for that? Did you go in like a Wikipedia hole about the Manson <coughs> Tate murder? Well, um, I don't know what this says about me, Cole, but I was pretty familiar with the Manson murders. I mean, that's something I think everybody's obsessed with. There's a reason that it continues to be this cultural phenomenon all these years later. I think that we were very aware that these were real people, these were real murders. I mean, American Horror Story is fiction, so the stuff that we're doing, no matter how gory or graphic, is made up. This was real, and I'm aware of that. Sharon Tate was someone's sister, someone's wife. I get that. These other people were had families and loved ones. That being said, it's my job. We were given the script, and we don't want to suck at it, so we went for it. And the way that we dealt with it was, I think we just frankly, kind of focused on each other. Also, the whole thing was sort of ridiculous. I mean, Billy in that wig. <laughs> First I laughed of all, a little bit, but then he it scared me. But you have to understand, when wasn't he good as tax? Like, what is it? I'm the devil, and I made it do the devil's work. Oh, it was scary. When they first put the wig on him, it needed a lot of work. And when it first went on, I was like, oh, boy. Like, we were next to each other in the makeup trailer. But he, he did a really good hair swing. Like, we'd make him do the hair swing. So I don't want to make it sound like we had fun recreating the Manson murders. Because there were some people on Twitter who told me that they thought it was gross. And how dare I say that it was an enjoyable experience. What I mean is, and you, it's like, come on. I think you can parse out and understand what I'm saying. I enjoy doing the work with my actors, my fellow actors, not my actors. I don't own them, Cole. Um, but I also appreciate the fact that they really did their best to make it as authentic as possible. They made the living room look basically identical. The actress who played Sharon Tate was fantastic. Um, the actress that played Abigail Folger, I mean, these were really great actors and it was upsetting. It was really upsetting. It's upsetting to watch. Yeah. I and mean, that was one of the most brutal sort of murder scenes that we had seen. Yep. Pretty uh, horrible. You know, and so the season finale is on Tuesday yes. night. And you've sort of teased it, but is there anything else we can get out of you? You know what? I'm just going to tell you everything that happens right now. Because nobody <laughs> will care. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I think that all of the puzzle pieces come together in a way that's really, really satisfying. Um, I think that what the show ends up being and what it starts out being is a really interesting arc to track. I think you're gonna see some fantastic performances. It's also like 30 episodes of a show in one. Like, you're gonna need to pause it, you're gonna need to be like, what just happened? Hold on, like, okay, wrap your head around it, press play again. Maybe you wanna have like a group with your friends afterwards, you guys can talk it through. You're gonna need a nap. Maybe a little bit of a drinky drink. I would I would hydrate before you watch it just to stay in peak physical condition. You might want to stretch. So I think wow. it's gonna be I think it's gonna be amazing. I mean it's it's gonna be great. You should work for FX's advertising <laughs> department here. I'm like convinced. Yeah, that sounds scary the way I put it, Cole, didn't it? You're gonna faint. Very scary. No, well you're gonna enjoy it. I can't wait to watch and I know we have some people in the audience that have some questions for you. Starting over here. Hi. Hi. Um, so now that you got to be part of American Horror Story, yes. um, do you think you'd want to like maybe do another season? Because I know the show has a tendency of bringing people back, you know, for. I would season. love to do another season. If they would have me, I would show up with many bells on all parts of my body. Absolutely, I would love to be a part of that. Yeah, you're sort of part of the family now. Well, right? let's hope. <laughs> we got one more. Uh, another question. I mean. Oh, oh, right here. Uh, what do you like about the most of being in American Horror Story, and how is it different from your other roles that you've played in the past? That is a good question. Um, the thing I like best about it is I've never been part of a genre show that has such a fervent fan base. And it's really satisfying to work really hard on something and get a lot of feedback from the people that are watching it. Sometimes you do a job, and there's a lot of TV on. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's a lot. There's too much television. So sometimes the work you do doesn't really get seen. This gets seen, and that's amazing. So I love that aspect of being part of it. It was different. There was a lot more blood on hand, a lot more fake blood, not real blood. Um, and, But you know what's funny is that you would think oh, it's a horror show, you know, the set is very somber. No, like, it was a really, really fun set, and I've actually worked on comedies that were way more serious than the vibe on this set. So 
but you asked me what was different. I didn't really answer you, did I? I went in a totally different track. Um, it's different that, oh, I, there, it's a lot of stunt work and a lot of amazing prosthetics. And the people that do, the, the hair and makeup people are head by Aaron Kruger Mikash, who's incredible. Did, have, did you watch the whole season? Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to call you out. I don't want to embarrass you if you haven't seen it. But there was one scene where there's a gimp, and the gimp is being held by the. Yeah, you saw that. You don't understand how good that looked. Like that looked straight up real. So that's the biggest difference. Is I'm seeing like gore and guts up close and personal. Ugh, it's pretty gross. You know, you mentioned sort of the vibe on set, yep. um, and so much was unfolding in real life politics while yep. you guys were filming. Should you guys talk about Absolutely. politics on Absolutely. Well, first of all, nobody loves their phone more than Billy Eichner. So Billy is on his phone. I mean, look, I love my phone too, but Billy is really on that phone. And so he's super well-informed. I'm super well-informed. So, you know, it would be like, oh, great. Did you read about Charlottesville? And so there was absolutely those discussions on set. You can't get away from it. I mean, I think it's... I think it's everywhere. I mean, I feel like every dinner party I go to, you know, every when I go to the dry cleaner, I feel like everybody wants to talk about what they're seeing happening on the news. So yes, absolutely, we discuss that stuff. And we have one more question for you. Okay. Hi there. Hi. Uh, so now that there's been Freak Show, Hotel, yes. uh, and now Cult, given that you would want to return, if you could return and come up with your own theme for American oh Horror God. Story, what would it be? Well, I did say it would be fun to do American Horror Story Housewives. <laughs> Um, that would be sort of interesting to me. But I think it would be fun to do something like science fiction-y. Do you know what I mean? And I know you'd never think this about me, but I love like post-apocalyptic sci-fi stuff. So maybe it can be like on a spaceship. I don't know, something crazy like that. Some world that they have, but they're so brilliant to coming up with these very unique worlds. So I'm sure whatever the next season's gonna be, it's gonna be incredible. But what do I know? I'm not a writer. I just show up and do what they tell me. Maybe American Horror Story Housewives in Space. <gasps> Perfect. I think you would lead that cast. That would be amazing. <laughs> Cole, you know what? Congrats. That was a good, that was a good one. Well, it's not going to get better than that. So we're going <laughs> to wrap it up here. But thank you so much for joining us, thank Leslie. You, Cole. And everybody, make sure to catch American Horror Story Cult on FX Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Thank you. Give it up.